What's up, everybody? I do not believe it is too dramatic to sit here and say the Big 12's future may have very much changed on Thursday night. I'm Pete Mundo, heartlandcollegesports.com is how you find us covering the Big 12 Conference. Thanks for being here. Share the video on YouTube and Facebook as well. Subscribe on YouTube and, of course, like the page on Facebook. Thanks for joining us. So Thursday, if you look at Thursday for the Big 12, of course, that was when Kansas State won the epic game against Michigan State in the Sweet 16. I don't believe it is too much to sit here and say that day, March 23rd, 2023, they have changed the future of this league forever. Mark this day down. If you're a diehard Big 12 fan, as I am and as obviously you are if you're on this show, Mark this day down because we will remember it for a long time. So Thursday was not just about Kansas State basketball. Thursday started off, in case you didn't know what happened on Thursday morning, the Big 12 announced that the league would be partnering with the legendary Rucker Park in New York City. That's the legendary, you know, basketball court there. All the legends have come through there at one time or another. And in a press release put out by the Big 12, they said they're going to operate youth clinics at Rucker Park, for local youth in grades 6 and below. The clinics are going to be held across multiple days, led by head coaches from men's and women's teams, from Big 12 programs, and uh, they're also going to do summer exhibition games there as well. So all of a sudden, the Big 12 is clearly planting a flag in New York City. That's what's happening here. Now, this is not a surprise. If you know Commissioner Brett Yormark's background, you understand that this guy obviously is from New York City, He was with the Brooklyn Nets. Then he's with Rock Nation, Jay-Z's company. He's a basketball guy. He's a New York guy. Now, he's a Big 12 guy right now as the commissioner, and he's done an outstanding job for this league. But clearly, he wants to build this brand of the Big 12 to be the ultimate basketball conference in America. That's what he wants. That's what Brett Yormark wants to do with the Big 12. He, He knows that... He can't compete with the SEC in football. And he's not going to try to compete with the SEC in football. Now, you can still look at the SEC and you can sit there and you can say, hey, the SEC is going to be a great football conference. We all know that. The Big 12 is not going to duplicate what the SEC is doing, but it's still going to be a very good football conference. We know that. When it comes to basketball, that's where Brett Yormark sits there and says, I see an opportunity. I see a chance for this league to be the clear number one basketball conference in America, hands down, nobody's going to come close. That's what Brett Yormark is seeing right now with the Big 12 Conference, and he's right to see that. He's right to look at this as a massive opportunity. He believes that college basketball is undervalued. He thinks that when it comes to these TV contracts, the contracts are basically paid for football, and then they throw in basketball. And Yormark's like, hey... Football's one product, basketball's another. Why don't we split this thing up? And that's what's going to happen, by the way, when the Big 12 goes to market in, what, 2031. That's how this is going to go down in the next decade. They're going to split up those sports and put them to market separately, and that's a smart thing to do. So Brett Yormark, it appears, based on reports and rumors and everything else, wants to build a super conference for basketball. He wants to bring in, and he wants to have on board potentially Gonzaga. He may want to poach a couple of Big East schools, right? He may want to say, hey, Villanova, Georgetown, St. John's, whoever else you want to add into that mix, he may say, you know what? We want a super conference for basketball. They're not football schools. That's okay. But we're going to create the best basketball conference in America and plant our flag in New York. And he started to do that in part with this move with Rucker Park on Thursday. That was announced on Thursday morning. So that happens Thursday morning, and then comes Thursday night. Then comes this epic all-time college basketball game between Kansas State and Michigan State, coincidentally enough, in New York City at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. That's what happened on Thursday night. And Kansas State comes in there with, by the way, four guys from New York City, led by All-American Marquise Noel, And they put on a show of all shows. It was an all-time great college basketball game. It does not get any better than what you saw on Thursday night. You had two teams that were crisp, not a lot of turnovers in that game. They were 
on fire from three-pointer. The two teams combined for almost 50% from downtown. It was a great basketball game. Goes to overtime. Kansas State, of course, gets the win. And you think about, think about this, right? Kansas State, on the biggest stage in the basketball world, that is Madison Square Garden, gets a huge victory in the Sweet 16, goes to an Elite Eight with, by the way, the most exciting player in the Big 12 in Marquise Noel. I'm not sitting here saying the best player necessarily, but the most exciting player in the Big 12. No look passes, behind the back, alley-oops, 19 assists, sets an NCAA record. That's the kind of night that it was for Kansas State and Marquise Noel, and that's what makes him at five foot eight the most exciting player in this conference, hands down. That guy puts on a show on the biggest stage. Kansas State wins the game. They're going to an Elite Eight, first time since 2018. They've got this first-year head coach in Jerome Tang, who people were kind of unsure about how good was he going to be, longtime assistant at Baylor, and he gets the job done and then some. They were picked last in the Big 12 Conference, last in the Big 12 before the season. By a wide margin, they had two returning players from last year after Bruce Weber got let go. And now they're in the Elite Eight. And on the biggest stage, a New York kid. Think about this, Marquise Noel, a New York kid from Harlem, leads this team on the same day that Brett Yormark plants a flag in New York City with this Rucker Park announcement. And then on Friday morning, who's on the back page of the New York Post? Who's on the back page of the New York Daily News? Marquise Noel. I got to give the Daily News credit. Their back page read as follows. King of Manhattan, parentheses, New York and Kansas. And then the back page for the Daily News, or the back page for the New York Post, read the King of New York with a picture of Marquise Noel. Kansas State, the Big 12, lands on the back pages of the New York Post and the New York Daily News on the same day that Brett Yormark decides that they're going to make this announcement with Rucker Park and plant a flag in the Big Apple. You could not ask for a better script. If you're Brett Yormark, you could not put a better script together if you tried. That's how great of a day this was on Thursday for the Big 12 Conference. And it's one of those things that if we may look back in five years and say, that night helped change this league. I don't want to overreact to it in the short term and say that anything's going to be different tomorrow for the Big 12. It's, it's not. I'm not making that case. But when we tell the story of the Big 12 morphing from what it was pre-Brett Yormark to what it's going to be in a post-Brett Yormark world in 2025 and 2028 and 2031. If we look at it from that perspective, that's where this day is going to be part of that story. And by the way, it might be a part of that story that for those of us who are diehard fans, we're going to remember. We're going to be involved with. We're going to be thinking about down the road. That night made a difference. That night mattered for the Big 12. And that's my big takeaway from Thursday night. I mean, yes, Kansas State's going to an Elite Eight. And by the way, with Alabama getting knocked out, Kansas State is the highest seed on the left side of the bracket remaining. Think about that for a second, right? It's it's unbelievable. I'm not sitting here right now. I got to see a little bit more. Let's you know get to the Elite Eight first before I start predicting anything like Final Fours or anything of that nature. Or I should say national championships. Final fours, you know, they should beat FAU. And we'll talk more of that uh, as the day and the you know next 24 hours go on. But Kansas State, based on seeding at least, is the favorite on that side of the bracket right now. Think about that. And then Texas is the highest on the other side. We could have, I don't want to jump to any conclusions here because Texas is playing as I have this conversation. We could have an all Big 12 national championship. It's not crazy. And Thursday night is one of those nights that we're going to look back on and say, you know what, um, that might have played a big difference. That's how great that game was. That's how important that day was. And the Big 12 could be forever changed by Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Pete Mundo. It is so good to be here with you on the show. Thanks for joining us on heartlandcollegesports.com. Hey, um, if you don't, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Subscribe to our podcast as well. We're on there 
all the time. Sometimes content from the podcast does not make it to video. So be sure to find us on iTunes and uh, check us out on the podcast as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to note this too. Join us on our members' forums. We've got free message boards, free message boards at heartlandcollegesports.com. We just put them on the site here in the last couple of months or so. So go check those out. Sign up. They're free. Great way to interact with all of us at heartlandcollegesports.com and continue the conversation beyond what we're doing here. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for being a part of this show. And thank you, as always, for helping us build this site up to reaching millions of fans every single month across the Big 12 Conference. It has been a thrilling couple of days. Kansas State, enjoy this. If you are a K-State fan, enjoy this ride. Now, you got to get over that hump. K-State has been to a lot of Elite Eights. They've struggled getting the Final Fours. We know that. That's their history at this point. But enjoy this ride because this team is special. This team is likable. This is like, you, you, think, about, you think about teams that are easy to root for, right? This Kansas State team is as easy to root for as any team I can think of in recent history. These guys came together. Nobody knew each other. Nobody had any idea about anybody else's background. But they came together under a wildly likable head coach in Jerome Tang, who wears his faith on his sleeve, who's not going to apologize for it, and is going to truly try to build the character of these young men. That is what Jerome Tang does, and he is not afraid to share that and show that. And I love every second of it. I am all about it. And I'm happy for him. I'm happy for that fan base. And let's be honest, you know, this team has not been to a Final Four since 1964. A lot of Elite Eights. A lot of Elite Eights. Since 1964, K-State's been to the Elite Eight in 1972, 1973, 1975, 1981, 88, 2010, 2018, and 2023. This year, no Final Fours over that run. They've lost every time. So now they got to get over that hump, and we're hoping K-State can do it. I'm Pete Mundo on Heartland College Sports. It is great to be here with you, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Subscribe on YouTube, share on Facebook, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your day.